Now I'm going to introduce Kenny Salvini and Tyler Schrenk, who will be telling us about the Here and Now project. Uh, I was paralyzed in 2004 in a snow skiing accident. I fell about 40 feet onto my head, and I broke my neck in C3-4. Yeah, so as many people in this room can attest to, a new paralysis diagnosis is pretty daunting life change to try to wrap your head around. And, uh, you know, you think 2004 wasn't that long ago, but it was kind of the, the dark ages of assistive like, technology, at least for me. And um, yeah. so much of the... Uh, the focus was on physical recovery, and there wasn't much wrapped around mental, emotional, spiritual recovery. And uh, so when I was discharged from the hospital, it was kind of, well, uh, the, the cure is five years away, good luck, you know, let us know how it works out. And they sent me home with kind of very little resources for how to do life in the here and now. And, um, and so for the next six years, I spent most of that time as a shot in, never left the house, I was battling a lot of pressure sores and a lot of depression. Uh, you know, I was stuck in bed at one point for two and a half years from a single pressure sore. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'd have family members go up to the UW Spinal Cord Injury Forum and see a bunch of people in manual chairs and never see anybody like me. And so it was kind of why go. And, uh, yeah, and then when my nurses would come out to dress my wounds, we'd ask if they ever see anybody like me. And they'd say, we've got nine in this county. And uh, I never saw any of these people. And, that all changed in uh, January of 2010. I was at a random Qantas fundraiser with a friend and ran into a man named Dan McConnell. He'd been paralyzed since uh, 1970. He's been in a chair for 40 years. And we got to talking about pressure sores. And he told me about the Rise Cushion, which is uh, a different piece of well, assistive technology that uh, completely offloads your ischial bones. And that basically saved my life. And, uh, and it sent me on a mission to connect with as many people as I could because suddenly, you know, my greatest resource wasn't my doctors, my therapists, it was the people that were living in this situation, the people that were, you know, living this life. And so it's, that was the kind of uh, impetus that launched the Here Now project. And it was a slow, slow going for the, for the majority of the time, but it was about two years later, I uh, ran into I was at a barbecue for another friend's 25th anniversary of his injury, and uh, there were seven of us sitting in a circle. And this one guy, I don't know if Ian's in the picture, but he's hard to miss. He's got uh, dreadlocks down to his knee. And uh, I came rolling up to him, and we started talking to Adaptive Computing. And I, he's like, Well, how do you use your mouse? And I said, Well, I, I use the Dragon actually speaking to me. And he said, You're an idiot. <laughs> you need to try a joystick mouse, and he sent me one about a month later, and he said, and all I can think is I'm an idiot. It took me nine years to discover something like that. So that was another connection that basically revolutionized my life. And uh, it was about another year later, we started having barbecues at each other's houses, and in 2013, it was one of our other uh, friends that discovered switch control, which is uh, something that people are using pretty randomly now, but it was kind of unheard of at the time. And, that started kind of a technological revolution for the high paralysis uh, community that is built into uh, what has become the TSF, which Tyler can talk about in a minute. But that uh, was another one of those game changers because having access to a smartphone is access to the world. And uh, now we live in homes that are fully accessible. I can unlock my front door just by selling my phone to We can adjust lights, uh, thermostat, all sorts of things. And, uh, and the Here Now Project has grown into a fellowship of support all over Western Washington. We've got support meetings up and down I-5, with all over the peninsula. It's uh, it's about getting me to be with somebody that's been where you've been. Um, you know, because like I said, it was really easy to feel like you're stuck on an island when you get one of these diagnoses, and uh, and that doesn't have to be the case anymore. Because there's lots of people that, that are out there that have been where you've been, and um, yeah, we've got support meetings for caregivers and family members. My wife runs a, a wives and girlfriends group because everybody that gets affected by paralysis is not just the person diagnosed. It's, it's uh, you know, parents, siblings, spouses, uh, kids, everybody gets affected. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of our story, and it kind of dovetails into the TSF, which is what Todd can speak to about all the technology that he has access to. 
Hello, my name is Tyler Shrink, and I'm the President and Executive Director of the TSF Technology Changing Lives Foundation. And our goal is to educate, train, provide, and set up individuals interested in assistive technologies. So I'll start off with just a brief story about myself and why I feel this is important. I had my spinal cord injury seven years ago, and much like Penny, I was quite isolated at the beginning. You know, I spent years in my dad's living room um, dealing with depression, thinking that the rest of my life was going to be asking my dad to turn my TV channel, um, turn the volume up and down, turn my lights on and off. And I began to find out that there were technologies that could help me with that. And once I started to see that there's these technologies, I realized, well, maybe my dream of independently could be possible. So over the years, I found out ways to use technology to open and close my doors, turn my lights on and off, and eventually live in my own house independently to where now I can spend approximately eight hours completely by myself. I can uh, feed myself with low-tech devices, such as I have spatulas and spoons mounted to my wall, to higher-tech things where I can open and close my door by voice, um, control my television by voice, lights by voice, and several other devices. So one thing I wanted to share is we've talked about a lot of these off-the-shelf consumer technologies that are fairly easy to, to use and set up, such as with Amazon uh, Fire TV Cube to control your television, or previously we talked about the Philips Hue lighting system where you can control your lights by one. But what I wanted to show and encourage people to, to do is use these devices together um, to help create unique solutions. So one of the things I struggle with is being able to actually achieve a full comp. So many people with higher level spinal cord injuries need something called comp assist. And it's a machine where it helps you clear your lungs because many people need suction through a, a trach or a face mask. So I'm going to show you a quick video of how I've used a couple of these technologies together so it can be done independently with the goal of, um, you know, living independently. So I'm going to show you how I created this comp assist device. Due to limited lung function, I am unable to achieve a full cough and clear my lungs. This is incredibly important to breathe properly throughout the day. In order to achieve a full cough, I need to use a cough assist machine. Here is a video of me using a caretaker to help me achieve this task. <laughs> using a Wemo outlet, a Philips cough assist machine, and a mounted face mask on a gooseneck arm, I am now able to cough independently. Alexa trigger cough on. Alexa trigger cough off. This is Tyler and this is how I am able to cough independently. Another quick video, and this is just another example of how you can combine technologies that necessarily aren't meant to work together. And this is how I can control my front door by voice. Um, typically, this uh, could be open sesame door opener would be controlled with a little switch button that you would tap with your face. I wired in a garage door opener that someone would use to open and close the garage door with their cell phone. So I researched and found out this garage door opener could be wired into the open sesame door opener so your door can be open and closed by voice rather than tapping the button. It can also be done with the cell phone as well. In this video, I'm going to show you how I can open and close my door 
using an Amazon Echo, an open sesame door opener, and a GoGo Gate garage door opener. Alexa, trigger door open. Sending them to it. Alexa, trigger closed door. Sending them to it. This is Tyler, and this is how I get in and out of my house independently. So those are a couple of the more custom solutions. You know, there's many things, like I mentioned before, just off-the-shelf things that are incredibly easy to set up and use. And the goal of the foundation is to be able to provide these devices to anyone who has the need. So through fundraising, I purchased this equipment, set up and trained individuals at no cost to the user through fundraising, and so anyone who has the need can just apply for a grant, and then I provide the device to them at no cost. So thank you very much.